It's that time again to take a peek into what's making a buzz in the crypto sphere, and this week did not disappoint. From new all-time highs for Chainlink, a cautionary tale about yield farming yams, to a renewed debate about how much ETH is actually out there, plus the newest institutional player to double down on Bitcoin. All on deck for this week's edition of Exodus Crypto News. Welcome back, everyone. It's Friday, August 14th, and first at bat this week is the seemingly unstoppable Chainlink. At the time of this recording, Link has passed the $18 mark and is up 153% in the last 30 days. It now sits at number five in the overall market, flipping BCH as the demand for DeFi increases across the board with over $4.7 billion locked up in the DeFi space with an overall combined $13.4 billion market cap. Chainlink has also been very busy this past year making deals with external partners, which has also helped fuel its ascent. And here's why Chainlink is so important to the DeFi space. Oracles. You know the Oracle. Everyone knows the Oracle. No, not the Oracle of Delphi, the Oracles of DeFi. Chainlink is perfectly positioned because of the way it connects real world data to smart contracts using a decentralized network to audit and verify the inputs and outputs of the data it processes. This data is then connected to smart contracts to verify, in this case, prices for fiat to crypto or crypto to crypto exchange rates such as USD, BTC pairs or stablecoins to ETH. A blockchain itself doesn't know any of this data. It only knows about itself. An Oracle is a trusted source which connects this real world price information to the smart contracts. An Oracle is expected to tell the truth so the smart contract can do its thing. Without this link between real world data and the blockchain, DeFi would not be possible. Of course, Chainlink has implications beyond DeFi, but this is exactly what's propelling the price of the Link crypto token into space. Moving on with a linked story. This week, we saw some insane action in the DeFi space when in less than 90 minutes, over $90 million were poured into a yield farming scheme called YAM. And in less than 24 hours later, the cap was over $400 million. YAM was launched as a meme token without a code audit. Users quickly poured millions in because of the six-figure yield. Because of this popularity and whale activity, YAM needed to update its governance model and proposed a change in the way YAM was minted. When the governance proposal was submitted, a flaw in the code was found preventing the execution of the proposal, leaving any future governance changes impossible. Basically, turning YAM into a brick, and any of the assets which were locked up are now lost and worthless. When is the last time you saw a token go from zero value to over a $400 million market cap and back to zero in less than 72 hours? Is this a cautionary tale we should all be worried about? My personal takeaway here is simple. Greed and FOMO took over common sense of auditing code. I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. This yam crop failure did not just affect the farmers. It had a rippling effect across the whole Ethereum space by increasing the network fees across the board. The Ethereum network is only able to process about 15 transactions per second, and when the markets heat up, so does the load on ETH, causing massive transaction backups. When this happens, fee estimating software starts adjusting fees upwards and the transaction fees could end up costing more than the amount of the transactions itself. If you're an Exodus user who was transacting ETH or ETH tokens during this time, you may have felt this sting as well. This scenario is like a snake eating its own tail, posing risks to the whole ecosystem by turning people away from the network. Almost everyone is now thinking of e-scaling and how it hasn't come fast enough for the advent of DeFi, which shows no sign of slowing down. When ETH 2.0 or second layer scaling solutions? Or will we see the entire ecosystem migrate to a new smart contract network, which already has scaling solutions built in? We would love to hear your thoughts, so please leave them in the comments. The opportunity to highlight the shortcomings of the Ethereum network was not lost on the Bitcoin community, and a renewed debate, this time started by Pierre Rochard, who is the Bitcoin strategist at Kraken, was kicked up this week when the total supply of Ethereum was called into question. 
Rochard, while speaking to Morgan Creek Digital's co-founder, Anthony Pompliano, said that Kraken was having difficulty auditing the total supply of ETH. This is important because if the actual supply is not known, then how do you know your ETH really exists? Rochard commented, are you actually receiving legit ETH or is this fractional reserve ETH that was kind of created out of thin air? The current and total supply amounts mean a great deal to some in the Bitcoin camp who would argue that ETH can't be a good store of value if you can't actually tell how many are in existence. This along with the unlimited supply cap, as opposed to BTC with a limited supply cap of 21 million and all network nodes agreeing on the current minted supply. On the other side of the fence, there are those in the opposite camp who question whether it's a big deal or not because of the fundamentals of how the ETH network works. What camp are you in? Do you agree with the Bitcoin point of view or is this really not a big deal? One thing for sure is this is not the end of the debate and there is a lot of work to do on both sides if we're ever going to see mass adoption of crypto. And if you would like to help speed that process, share Exodus with your friends and family. Exodus is a cryptocurrency wallet for your desktop or mobile device, home to more than 100 cryptocurrency wallets and other crypto apps. With Exodus, you can safely store, send, receive, and exchange your crypto assets. Click the link above to start sharing Exodus today. We've come to the end of another exciting week in crypto, and before we go, I wanted to share the latest in adoption news. This week, a traditional investment company named MicroStrategy was the first listed company to buy BTC as part of its capital allocation strategy. This means that MicroStrategy is buying BTC as a store of value and to protect their investments against a grim economic outlook fueled by massive inflation. and. It's a pretty big deal from a company whose CEO declared in 2013 that Bitcoin would die out. This, my friends, is the beginning of a wave. Where will you be when Bitcoin and crypto wipe out traditional finance and people worldwide have greater access and control over their financial well-being? Exodus will be right here, helping build this future and walking with you side by side. Till next week, hold on.